Hello, everyone. My name is Yuri Olshay. I work for Red Hat and I work uh, on Perf upstream. This presentation is uh, about the way the Perf is handling build, build IDs of applications that it's profiling. And it's basically about uh, the new feature, new way of handling build IDs in Perf. This feature is mainly uh, focusing on people who needs to record the data on one server and uh, report, uh, investigate the profile on another uh, on another machine. So really, we believe that this change, this this feature, actually will make uh, this workflow easier. So easier report and moving the data to another machine. Uh, basically, we can cut the perf archive execution, which I will get to in another slide, but it's quite an uh, important achievement uh, that, that we like. And by a consequence, it actually makes the profiling, the record uh, even faster. So that's that's really nice side feature. So before actually going to explain uh, what's the new way of handling build IDs, let's see what's the current workflow when you want to profile on one server and investigate the profile on another. So currently you run the perf record. Of course, you do the profiling as, as you want. Uh, at some point you end up with the perf data and now you need to run the perf archive. If you want to investigate this perf data on another machine, then on this uh, record server, you need to run the perf archive on top of the data that you just recorded. The archive will go through the data and identif identify all the binaries that were involved in the profile and, with, and it will pack all the binaries to one tarball. And you need to take this tarball and the data and uh, copy that on the on the report server the server that you can do the investigation on when you are on the server you need to uh, unpack uh, the tarball and uh, populate the dot debug cache with its data and right after that you can basically run the perf report and uh, everything i mean the report will have enough information it will have the binaries that are, uh, that are uh, linked to the perf data. So it will, it will correctly translate the samples and you will see the function calls, not just the, uh, not just the function addresses. So that's the current workflow. Um, sometimes it's really uh, horrible to get the, not just the perf data, but also the perf archive uh, uh, from the customer because perf archive depends on how the data are big, but it can be really big. Also, if the applications that you are profiling are big, then the archive will be really big and get it from the customer through possibly multiple VPNs is not always, uh, not always a great experience. So this is something uh, we were aiming for to, to make it better. And I will now go through uh, the new workflow that that can be used uh, that feature this feature is actually enabling so again you have two servers one uh, you record the data another that you investigate the data on so on the record server you run the perf record as you are used to but you need to specify uh, one new option build id dash mmap i will explain the name will become obvious in in few slides but now just for a uh, quick presentation so this is the only option uh, you need to specify. Other than that, you can put any option that uh, that uh, that you are using. It's not like a trade-off within options. You can use always all the options available. And you end up with the perf data, of course. And now you don't need to do the perf archive. The trade-off here is uh, that the reporting server, of course, always needs the binary. We just provide them uh, from the different place, and the different place is debug info daemon. 
So you need running instance of debug info daemon somewhere. For my tests, I was using the debug info daemon on the on the server that I was doing the profiling, but actually it will be uh, it can be available somewhere in the network, and the server just needs to have access to the binaries to the or even just RPMs. The debug info daemon can go to the RPMs and provide the binaries and the debug info. So that's the new way you record with the extra new option and you provide the debug info uh, daemon. No perf archive step. So when you are on the report server, if you run the perf report on top of the data, of course, you will not see uh, the data being translated. What you need to do is the new functionality in the perf build ID cache, which you will add uh, the perf data, dash A perf data and you provide uh, the address of the debug info server and build id cache will actually go through the data identify all the needed binaries and debug infos and talk to the debug info daemon to get the binaries uh, to the server and it will download populate the debug cache and the report uh, will suddenly start to work of course it will it will have all the necessary binaries and debug info information to display a uh, nice, nice profile. So that's basically, uh, that's basically how the new workflow looks like. So we, uh, you don't need, uh, you no longer transfer all the tarball uh, with the binaries, but we change it for actually perf report and build ID cache uh, being able to download the data afterwards when when they are actually actually needed before going little bit little bit more deeper on how this feature is implementing it's actually probably nice to <laughs> explain what build id is so build id is a kind of unique id for the application it's generated uh, by the linker so when you compile the application, the last step, the linker uh, will make a hash uh, of the of some sections of the binary and produce the uh, produce the build ID. So there's a there's an option uh, in the GNU linker. It's build ID, uh, and you can specify if you want MD5 or SHA SHA1. It stores in the node section of the ELF file. So any application that can display your node sections like in here i'm using the retail dash n uh, you will see probably more node sections so the one that has the type new build id will will get you the build id of the application perf is actually using build id to identify every binary that it comes to because as i said it's the unique uh, unique uh, id for the application and if you upgrade the application, the application with the same name will have, of course, different build ID. So the profile, uh, when it's reporting the samples, it always needs to know which application I should go to and find the data for the profile. And it's it's based on the build ID. So that's why we care about build ID. So how it all works, a little bit more deeper on how the, how the profiling uh, profiling works. So you run perf record and the profiling will start. You configure any events that you want. At some point you will say, okay, that's enough. You stop, uh, you stop the perf record and things will start to happen. Uh, first perf will disable everything that was enabled so all the all the events and all the extra stuff that we allow to be configured will be disabled and right after that we flush the data to the uh, to the file so the data is spread over multiple uh, multiple buffers so at some point we take all the data and make sure that the file contains all the needed information so in idle world, that would be where perf record would actually stop. But what's currently happening that perf record is opening the perf data yet again. The profile that was just stored 
to the file, we open again and we process it. We process it almost like per Freeport would do. Uh, and the reason is that we are actually looking for the binaries uh, behind the profile, for the binaries that were used in the profiling, that the samples are actually, uh, uh, that are actually behind the samples. And we need to store them uh, to the to the debug cache, which is actually time consuming. It of course depends how big is your profiles, how many samples you stored. But this is the extra processing that the perf record is doing when it's actually finishing. So you might have maybe noticed if you profile really a lot of data and you press Control C, sometimes it takes uh, a lot of time for perf record actually to finish and most likely it's spending time in in this uh, in this processing it goes through the data it looks for the binaries behind the uh, behind the samples and it stores them it reads the build ids and stores them into the debug cache i have simple diagram showing what's actually happening as i said we go through every sample and for every sample uh, we have the ip address and the pid like the process identifier. So we find the process and we find the memory portion that the sample uh, happened. So based on the IP address and uh, we, we find the uh, memory map and the memory map has many things inside. Uh, one of those things is also uh, the full path of the application or of the file, which is providing the data for the memory. And we take that path and we read uh, its build ID and we store it uh, to the to the debug cache. So this is really uh, what this extra processing look like. And here comes uh, the place where the new feature actually comes to the game. Uh, the new feature is all about storing the build ID directly in the memory map event. So the and the record option at the beginning, the build ID mmap is basically telling the uh, kernel, when you store the memory map, store their build ID right away. So if I show it in the diagram, it looks like this. So we have again the sample, we resolve the sample, we resolve the memory for the sample, but in addition to the path of the application, we also have uh, the build ID for the application. So there's no need for the extra extra loop uh, anymore. So that's why this feature is actually making the perf record faster. We can cut totally this extra processing. But of course, is a trade-off. Uh, we still need uh, this binary, this debug info that the loop was actually getting. But we need them at the time when we are reporting. So we added the support to download those binaries to the perf report and perf build ID cache. So when going through the data, both applications uh, can actually uh, download and store the needed binaries to the, to the debug cache. So where can we get those debug info and binaries as i already said it's the debug info daemon so perf knows how to talk to debug info daemon of course uh it's really simple interface client server basic interface you uh, perf specify uh, if it wants the binary or debug info based on uh, what is in the sample and it specifies the build id the debug info on the server side will check uh, its database if the build ID is there together with uh, whatever info is needed. It will send the information back and the perf will store it to the, uh, to the debug info, uh, debug cache, and it's, it's there for perf uh, and, and reporting. Debug info daemon is part of elf utils, so if you do the search on like the DNF search under the Fedora, just the debug info D, you will you will find the uh, you will find the package. It's been there since maybe uh, I don't know maybe one year, so it's definitely in the latest uh, latest uh, Fedoras. So it's it's available. So let's go once again through the. Uh, 
new new workflow. Uh, so on the server that you do the profiling on the record server, the only thing you need to do is uh, to do to run to add the option dash dash build ID dash uh, memory map, which perf record will use to inform the kernel store the build IDs into the memory maps. And this option is also to inform the perf record to cut the uh, the extra processing at the end. So that's the that's the only thing uh, that's happening here in the perf record. Then of course you need the debug info somewhere. Uh, maybe I should know, know that it's really highly configurable. I'm using it like uh, this during my testing, the debug info slash, which will actually provide you your whole system into the debug info uh, daemon. Uh, but it's highly configurable. You can specify uh, even like a bunch of RPMs and it will go through the RPMs and provide the binaries and debug info from the RPMs. So that's it on the record side. On the report side, yeah, uh, what do you need to do? You need to download the binaries. Uh, we added the dash dash debug info uh, daemon option, which actually specified the address uh, together with the port of the debug info daemon. Both the record option and this debug info daemon option can be also specified in the config file. So if you put it to the dot perf config, uh, you don't need to always put it uh, to your uh, to your command lines and it will be it will be always always there. The status of the feature, it's quite it's quite young feature. It was it was merged just a few weeks ago. Um, both kernel changes and tooling changes uh, are merged. It will be in 5.11, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, there are more things, uh, more things to do. Uh, we have some to-do list. Probably the biggest that we were asked uh, by guys from Google is the ability to detect if the build ID parsing in the kernel uh, failed. So the thing is that now when the kernel actually reads the build ID, uh, there are certain circumstances that this parsing can actually fail. It's like you need to take care extra lot for this parsing to fail. Um, mostly it's always there because it's in the uh, first page of the application, but uh, these guys are using huge pages and uh, they like to swap them out if they are not used. So uh, there are occasions where the uh, where the page is not there and there is nothing uh, kernel can do about that. So it will just uh, it will just keep. But as I said, in the normal workflow, if you do don't do anything uh, uh, special, the build ID is always there. However, we will we will actually fix that. We will detect that the build ID parsing fails, and uh, we will we will tell the perf record, the user space part, to actually uh, read that build ID instead instead of the kernel. So that's uh, that will that's one of the fix that we are uh, we are still working on. And that's that's basically it. So. If you have any questions, I hope this will improve some user experience with the perf. Hopefully. Okay, there is a question in the chat uh, by Lukash. Uh, I'll read it out. I'm still not sure how that would work with a customer. Do I understand correctly that the engineer who wants to create the report would have to access to the build ID daemon? Isn't it easier to just create an archive and pass it directly? As a customer, I would be hesitant to run some daemon available from outside to the engineer doing the report that is supposed to send some packages from my system to the engineer. Yeah, uh, well, of course, it's situation by situation. Uh, the old method is always there for situations like this. Uh, but yeah, we are aiming uh, for places where this is actually possible, where you can uh, when you, where you have the available uh, debug info daemon somewhere. So, yeah, it's definitely not solution for everybody, but it's it's there if it's if it's possible. Okay, there is another one question from uh, Takayuki Nagata. Are there any expected use case for the feature? 
Um, so, well, well, the use case is uh, basically as we described. Uh, as I said, it's new feature. It's like really fresh. So, uh, apart from us, nobody, <laughs> nobody is using it at the moment. So we will see. I mean, the use case is as was described in the in the presentation, and we will see if people people will like it.